Hey Fright fans, Scott from Fright Props here, and today I wanted to give you a look at what we call a mech board. This is what we call a mech board, and basically what it means is it's a board that holds all the components that would come with your standard air-powered pneumatic mechanism or prop. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's on a mech board and what each part of this does as we kind of work our way from right to left and describe all the components and what their role is in making an animated air-powered prop function. So the first thing on the right here is your regulator. And as you might suspect, that's used to regulate the PSI that you have coming from your compressor. The air from your compressor will come into the fitting here, pass through the regulator, and that will allow us to actually lower the PSI to the level that the prop you're attaching to that regulator wants, and then pass through here to the solenoid valve, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Every mech board comes with its own regulator because each prop needs different PSI settings. So you always want some way to be able to set the PSI for the specific prop that's going to be fed from this regulator. You don't want to have all your props running at the same PSI because some might need 40, some might need 60, some might need more or less. So you need a regulator on each mech board to control the PSI that's going to that specific prop. How a regulator works is pretty basic. You have your airline coming from your compressor. So we've adapted our compressor to this quarter inch airline. All our kits and mechs actually come with a fitting to do that as well. And that's gonna just plug in here to the airline fitting on the right of the regulator. All you do is press it in firmly until it seats all the way down in place. Like that, you should be able to pull it and it won't come out. Then you can go ahead and turn on your air. And in this case, I've plugged one of the fittings here on the solenoid so that we can just show the basic operation of the regulator. Otherwise, air would just come rushing out of this fitting here on the solenoid. We can go ahead and air up. And this will come preset from us at the recommended PSI for your mechanism or your prop, but you may need to adjust it. So when we're testing the mechanisms here, they don't have a load on them. There's no prop attached. So you may find as you attach a prop that you might have to up your PSI. So my recommended level is usually somewhere around 50 to 60 PSI. The minimum is 20. These valves won't function at lower than 20 PSI. And I never like to go above 100. So if we want to adjust it, all we do is pull down on this uh, knob here, and then we can turn it to the right to raise the PSI, or turn it left to lower it. And the basic rule of thumb is to use as little PSI as possible to get the desired result from your prop or mechanism. So that'll take some testing, but once you've found your right PSI, let's say this one is at about 60, you can set it, press the knob in to lock it, and you're all good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and shut off our air here and disconnect it. To bleed the air out of the regulator, I'm just gonna actuate the solenoid valve once. And to remove the airline from the fitting here, I'm just going to press down on the plastic collar around the airline and pull it out. So as I mentioned, the air will enter the regulator from your compressor here, pass through, head down to the solenoid valve. Now the solenoid valve is what actually controls the motion of the cylinder that's in your mechanism or your prop. In this case, we only have a single solenoid valve, but some mechanisms or props may have more. They may have one or two or three or even more valves. We use almost exclusively double acting valves because we're looking to control the motion of the cylinder forward and backwards, and that's the purpose of a valve like this. During normal operation, air will be flowing through port A here, and then when the solenoid activates, it will switch. It'll cut off A and have air flow out of B. And that's how you can control air to the two ports of a cylinder, making it extend and retract. On the opposite side, we have our air in here marked with P, and then we have two exhaust ports here marked R and S. Those two have flow controls put in them. These are what actually allow you to meter the flow of air going in and out of the cylinder. So you can adjust these by loosening them or tightening them. Tightening them will restrict the air in that direction, making the cylinder move slower. Loosening them will allow more air to flow, allowing the cylinder to move more quickly. Once you have those set, there's a little set screw here that you can dial in and then use a needle nose plier to tighten that down all the way. So you may need to do some experimenting again once you get your PSI set with the levels of your flow controls. We'll also have those set before we send it out for you, but you might need to adjust it depending on what you're doing with your specific mechanism. The airlines coming from your prop or your mech will also be tagged. So in this case, this is valve number one. We only have one here. And you can see the airlines are labeled with number one. If there were more valves, they would be numbered one, two, three, and so on. So all you do is take the airline with the tag number. This is one white, and that would just go right in here on the white fitting for the valve number one. And then your black airline marked number one would go into the black fitting. So everything is nice and color coded, super simple and easy to install. Again, to remove these, you just press down on this plastic collar here and pop them out. 
So the solenoid is what actually moves the cylinder, but how does it know when to move it and what pattern to move it in? Well, that's the job of the controller, which is our next step. So since our air is all taken care of over here, we now move to the electrical side of things. You can see the cables from the solenoid here coming up to our controller. In this case, we have a Peekaboo 1, but that may be different depending on what mech you've ordered. We offer a range of different choices for controllers. Um, with our props, we like to make sure everything is customizable. So if you want uh, different controllers, there are options when you order. Peekaboo One is our most basic controller. It's basically a one output controller with uh, no audio. So the controller you can kind of think of as the brains of the operation. It's basically telling the solenoid what to do, what pattern to operate in. And different controllers have different features, like I mentioned. If you have audio on your controller, you may also have the controller playing an audio file that goes along with your scare. And you may have multiple outputs as well if you want to do multiple cylinders or if you want to add in another effect like a light or a strobe or something like that. So as I mentioned earlier, this here is our Peekaboo One. It's a single output controller with no audio. And that's just being used to control our double acting solenoid here. And so this would be the setup for something like a door knocker where you just need to actuate that cylinder to create that knocking effect. You don't need any additional audio or any additional effects. Each mech board will also come with a power supply, so you don't need to bring in any external power. You'll have the power supply here. And what that is is basically a power brick that takes your household power and converts it to the 12 volt power needed for the mech board. One end of your power supply will have a standard plug like this that just goes into your wall that converts your household power to the 12 volt needed for the mech board. And the other end will have a barrel plug like this, which then just plugs into the controller. Pre-built props will already have a program entered into the controller. Things like mechanisms will have a test program entered as we test everything before it goes out, but you will need to customize that depending on your exact uh, needs for animation. Our controllers are always super simple to use. All you have to do is hit record, tap out a program for moving the cylinder, and then hit record again to save. So to illustrate that here on our Peekaboo One, I'm just gonna hit record, tap out a sequence. This will be moving my cylinder. If I hold the button down, the output stays on. If I let it go, it turns off. You can wait at the end to add a little bit of a post delay and hit record again to save. Now we have a trigger attached here that's actually active right now um, because it's still warming up. So this is gonna be playing our recorded show on a loop until that sensor warms up. As you can see there, once the sensor warms up, that light will turn off unless it senses me moving around here. And that's actually the next thing we wanna talk about is our trigger. So again, we offer a choice of triggers. You may not have this exact one or you may have ordered your device without a trigger. You don't necessarily need one if you wanna just set your prop to loop or you might have an existing trigger that you want to use. We offer a ton of different options. This is our most popular, which is our motion sensor, but we also have step mats, hand triggers, beam sensors, and all sorts of different options. The trigger will come installed into the controller. It's all wired up, doesn't need its own power source. The controller is powering the trigger. And you can think of the trigger as sort of like the eye. If the peekaboo or the controller is the brain, and the valve system is sort of the muscles that are doing the movement. The trigger is the eye. It tells the brain when to actually activate that sequence. So if you didn't have the trigger, the controller would never know to go off. It wouldn't know when a person is nearby and it should play its animation. But the trigger takes care of that. When your trigger is a motion sensor like this, the Peekaboo actually has programming in it to ignore these sensors because as they warm up, they'll continuously trigger the controller and the Peekaboo will ignore this sensor until it's actually the PIR itself, that's the passive infrared sensor here, is actually warmed up and ready to go. So it's normal if you plug everything in for it not to trigger right away. Wait a couple minutes for the sensor to warm up. You should see this red LED turn off once the sensor is warmed up and then you should be able to pass your hand in front of it and test your prop. We will include the manual for your specific controller. So if you have questions about how to program that controller, you can check the manual. You can also always email us with a question if you are not sure how to do the programming or if you just need some tips on that. Lastly, of course, we should check out our sticker here. That's our Fright Prop sticker. It's got our website on here. Here we'll have the uh, item number for the uh, item that you purchased and here will be the name of the item. So if it's a mechanism, like let's say this is our door wall pounder, it'll have the part number for the door wall pounder and the name door wall pounder here. That's good for if you need support or if you have to reorder or anything like that, you can always just check, remember where you bought it, frightprops.com, and check the part number here so that you can enter that in the website and quickly find the item you're looking for. As you can see, everything comes nicely installed cleanly on a board like this. Um, that's just to make sure everything stays in one place, it's nice and clean, uh, you're not dealing with parts that are kind of just connected to each other. Just makes things easy for install and moving things in and out of an area or for storage if you need to. All right, so that's a quick look at the type of mech boards that we include with our air powered mechanisms and props. If you have any questions about this, feel free to leave a comment on this video, or as always, you can email us at sales at Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.